Well, let's move on to uh, episode three, which is the future of cataract surgery, which is uh, kind of exciting. I think that uh, we would probably all agree that cataract surgery is a, a, a really exciting field to be involved in as a care provider. Uh, I think it's a great time to be someone who is involved in someone's uh, cataract surgery journey just because of the technology that we have access to now that we previously did not. You know, if somebody came in 30 years ago and they said, I want to have my cataract surgery and I want to see far away and I want to see up close and I want to see in the, in the middle and I don't want to wear glasses uh, for any of that stuff, they would have been like laughed out of the office and been like, well, that sounds cool. Uh, we can't do that. But we're in a we're in a time now where we can look those people right now and say, yeah, I got you. You know, we, we can do that. We 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 have the technology. We can, we can do this. And so I love it because we have made advancements uh, to the point where such a high percentage of our patients are really happy, even the ones who are pursuing, you know, advanced technology or spectacle independence after a cataract surgery. Um, and I think that the tempo with which the technology is advancing makes it even more exciting, both with cataract and glaucoma procedures. Um, you know, I think I'll just start out by saying maybe what I'm most excited about uh, is kind of the continued pursuit of the, you know, the holy grail of intraocular lenses, which I tend to think is a, a truly accommodating lens. You know, I know there's been pseudo accommodating lenses and things uh, like the crystal lens and things that haven't quite panned out the way that we had hoped that they would. But there's a lot of really exciting research that's been going on recently about, you know, accommodating lenses. And some of those are, you know, multi-lens systems with, uh, there are fluid-filled reservoirs that are uh, using ciliary body to change lens positions within the eye. And um, even some lenses that are being studied that have a PCO rate of zero, uh, which is pretty cool. And so I think that uh, the the thing that excites me the most is the uh, the pursuit of the Holy Grail with a, with accommodating IOLs, and then just improvements in both diagnostic and surgical equipment. I think that as time continues to march on, we will have access to better FACO machines that are more efficient, that deliver less ultrasonic energy, have less corneal edema, have more efficient surgery, and uh, create more capable surgeons and happier patients afterwards. So I guess this will be maybe less directed to one or 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 the other of you, but just if either of you uh, have anything that you're most excited about for kind of the future of uh, intraocular lenses specifically, and if not that, just kind of the whole cataract surgery field in general. I think for just advanced uh, implants, similar to like what you're saying too, I mean, an accommodating IOL would be fantastic. Something that can just replace the the natural lens and still function in the same manner would be awesome. Or even just like a multifocal that has less dyspotopsia. I mean, with the multifocal technology we have now, it's really, really good too. I mean, I mean that's one thing that we should uh, highlight as well as the multifocals are doing a really, really good job. But at the same time, the dyspotopsia, the glare and the halos are probably the hardest part for folks as they transition and get used to the to that implant and the neural adaptation. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm hopeful that by the time I need cataract surgery, that it'll be something that works just as well as my natural lens. Yeah, one of the one of the uh, conversations that I always have with patients is, you know, these lenses are amazing. The technology has come such a long way. They're not the same as our God-given lens, and we'll probably never have that, but man, just getting closer and closer to that is exciting. Uh, the other piece is, uh, to your point, Spencer, the technology changes, I think, uh, will will continue to make our jobs easier and easier. And uh, as, I'm, as I'm talking with patients about lens implant options, they kind of sit there and often go, man, I just wish I could try, try them out. You know, I just wish I could test drive this one compared to this one. And so, you know, there's there's some emerging technologies. Um, this is maybe a shout out to Green Man, but uh, that, that will get us to a point where, you know, the patient can actually put a headset on and walk or, you know, experience what it would be like to live with one lens versus the other. And I think that's that's really valuable for the patient to get to try ahead of time. Yeah, I, th I think it's even uh, even valuable to uh, if you've ever tried the Green Man headset on. So for folks that don't know, it is a virtual or augmented reality 
headset where uh, patients are able to be shown different lens options and what their vision will look like at distance, intermediate, near, bright light, dim light, halos around lights. Uh, and it's an, it's an interactive uh, uh, scenario where you can pick up a cookbook and look at it or sit in your car and look around and see what headlamps and streetlights look like. That's amazing technology. And, but I think that part of the value of that will not only be showing them, wow, here's what a multifocal looks like, but also, again, kind of pertinent negatives. So you take the, uh, you know, the person who's trying to decide between a multifocal or a standard lens, uh, and you just show them absolute presbyopia. And, you know, someone who's not used to that, or maybe has just the littlest bit of accommodative reserve left over, and you show them absolute presbyopia, even without a cataract, and a lot of people who put that headset on are like, oh, you know, this isn't quite what I was hoping for, you know, or I may, uh, I may need to wear trifocals for the first time in my life. And I think just showing people a, the closer and closer that we can get to a realistic expectation with a trial, I think only benefits patients and then uh, providers as, as well. And, you know, I think one of the things I would add as far as things that I'm excited for, um, you know, with every couple of years, we have newer and newer generations of intraocular lens equations as well. And so having the data that we have gathered, the better the equations are, the closer that we get to perfection every time. And I think I, I view it as getting a bigger and bigger and bigger bullseye. You know, I think the bigger we can make the bullseye uh, and, and the more accurate we can be with kind of our shot, the more, uh, the happier patients that we're going to, we're going to have. And I think both, you know, uh, newer generation equations and, you know, more accurate diagnostic testing. And we've seen even in, in our, you know, young careers, the, the, you know, evolution of even people that are post-refractive, right? You know, if you had a person that was, a prior LASIK patient or a prior RK patient, you used to have to manually do a whole bunch of stuff on the ASCRS website and you know, do a, you were like a miniature Albert Einstein trying to figure out what lens this person needed after their myopic ablation that was 10 years ago. And now we have things like Barrett TrueK and Aura and you know light adjustable lenses, where again, all those things are making the bullseye bigger for patients that might otherwise have been a more tightly thread needle. So I think that those are the things that I'm probably most jacked about. Is there anything we haven't already discussed that either one of you guys want to touch on? I think um, segueing away from just implants, I think it would be awesome to get to a point where we don't have to provide post-operative drops for patients, just be dropless completely. Uh, the one thing I always hear after their surgery is, man, those drops sting, especially the ones that we get through Impermiss, the combo drops. I mean, we've gotten to the point now where we can do one drop a day for 30 days, but man, it would be awesome to get to a point too, where all patients are a good candidate to not need that and do something during surgery. Yeah. I think you just reminded me of something else too. Uh, I think another thing I'm excited for, which I, I believe will be a reality in the next 10 years is, uh, immediately sequential bilateral surgery as well. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, with the way that it's set up right now, at least how my brain organizes it, uh, you know, the likelihood of getting bilateral endophthalmitis is like getting struck by lightning twice in the, you know, in the same storm. Uh, it's not super, not super likely. And I think that once insurance companies realize that they'll have to pay a facility fee once, pay anesthesia once, do all the stuff that it's cheaper and way better for a patient. Again, like we had the discussion with the same day next day, not for everybody, not everybody's going to be an immediately sequential, you know, surgery uh, candidate. But I, I believe that uh, we will be doing immediately sequential surgery for good candidates uh, for sure in our career, but hopefully in the next 10 years or so. And I think that's another step in uh, providing a better experience for well-informed patients that are looking for a quicker in and out, quicker back to regular life. So I think that uh, that's uh, that's probably going to be a wrap on episode three. And uh, just want to uh, thank you guys for all joining us for our uh, Cataract uh, Awareness Month chat. Uh, if you want more, you can schedule your personalized mini fellowship at Vance Thompson Vision today. 
immerse yourself in hands-on learning, gain insights from our experts, and take the next step towards excellence in eye care. Uh, remember, the world of eye care is ever-evolving, and so are we. And until next time, this is Spencer Morton signing off. And uh, don't forget to visit our website or follow us on social media for additional resources and updates. Thank you guys so much, and I hope this was helpful. And uh, Dr. Wynn and Dr. Steiner, thank you both for your uh, amazing insights. And uh, I look up to you guys, and I thank you for uh, for joining us, and have a good one. Thank you, guys. Thank you.